now move from theory to applications and uh, with the contributions. And um, the first one, uh, so this session is called Applications uh, Minded Materials and Disciplinary. And uh, the first talk. is uh, um, on the title of uh, using synchrotron radiation to study lithium ion batteries, so very well applied topic. And uh, the talk will be given by Dr. Yokota. I'm actually a PhD student. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Okay. Um, yeah, can I start? Okay, thanks for the introduction. I am a PhD student in the University of Kent. And today, actually, my supervisor, Dr. Maria Alfredson, was going to be giving a talk this time, but then she realised that she can't make it anymore. So that is lucky for me that I'm giving a talk. And I'm very appreciative that, that I have got a um, presentation in this conference. Okay, so I am working on the lithium ion battery, and then Today I'm going to talk about the lithium, lithium ion silicate. This is a cathode material in lithium, on, lithium ion battery. And then it's been really, really interesting and for the past 10 years and, and because lithium ion silicate is made of iron and silicon, they are both abundant in nature and therefore the, and low toxic and low cost. And also, lithium ion silicate is considered to be a very safe uh, battery material. Okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce you how the lithium ion silicate, the structure of lithium ion silicate. So, in the pristine materials, so this is a pristine, so when you are not cycling the battery and you have not done anything to it, so it's got a gamma space group, and this is made by quenching at 700 degrees. And half of the tetrahedra are pointing in the opposite direction and they are sharing the edges. And then when you deliciate, so that is taking the I taking lithium ion from the lithium ion lithium ion, lithium ion silicate, and you have got this form. And then when you discharge the battery, so when you put the lithium back into the structure, you have got this um, uh, beta 2 space group. And these are basically the same, but differs by the inverse or normal spinel. And then there are all the tetrahedra uh, pointing in the same direction and they are sharing the corners to each other. And then, so our aim of this project is to, first of all, to follow the phase transitions from pristine to deliciated and then go back to lithiated sample. So we wanted to examine this using the excess information. Okay, and then, and then our second name, this is, has been a lot of argument going on. So to, is it possible to access the ion three plus to ion four plus? So if you can, basically if you can reach the ion four plus, that is going to be really, really good for the, the lithium ions this battery materials because then that means we can reach to the higher voltage so then that can increase the capacity. So in back in 2007, Newton group said no, we, he didn't see any ion 4 plus from his MOSFARA spectra. And then loop group, he said yes to the ion 4 plus, so which is a good thing. So in the pristine sample, he saw um, ion, 3, ion 2 plus and a little bit of ion 3 plus. Um, then when he take, took the lithium off from the structure, he then started to see the formation of ion 4 plus. So this new pre-HR were forming to it. And then it's going even more when he has done the complete delithiation of the structure. And then we looked into the uh, XN's data of other literatures. In 2009, Domingo Robert, he is, um, he's done quite a lot of in situ XNs 
batteries, not only lithium ion silicate, but also like lithium sulfur batteries as well. But then Robert Domenico said he did not see any ion 4 plus, but instead he just saw, he just saw the oxidation of ion 2 to ion 3 plus. And then again, loop group said yes to ion 4 plus, so he confirmed the ion 4 plus com comparing uh, together with the most viable spectroscopy. So basically, he, why, so why did he say he saw ion 4 plus? It's because he saw, so he did um, XN spectra of ion 3 plus reference, and then that has gone, and then his sample, lithium ion silicate sample, when he took the lithium off from it, he had seen the E0 shift um, increase to further to higher energy to um, ion 3 plus reference. And then moving on to our, uh, our research. So what we did is pretty much same as, pretty much same as other groups, uh, Robert Domenico and Liv Grit, uh, but we used two different lithium ion silicate. So one is lithium ion silicate that has been used by other groups as well. And then second one is lithium rich ion silicate. So that has got Li2.2 ion silicate. So the, uh, our point was to, if we, we saw that if we have got more lithium can go in and take out from the sample, we thought that we could have increased the voltage up. So then that, uh, that is a possibility of increasing the oxid oxidization step to ion 3 plus to ion 4 plus. And then we used this uh, poach cell and we did in situ X measurement. But when we were cycling the battery, we only saw electrolyte degradation rather than um, for the extraction of lithium from the lithium ion silicate. So the plateaus were not observed. And then we moved on, then this is our XN spectra. Um, there are so many lines and it's quite difficult to see, but if you are interested, I can of course show it to you, so please come and ask me. And if you look at the pre-etch feature of lithium ion silicate, so this pre-etch feature, it, in the pristine sample, we have seen the doublet peak. So that is confirming the existence of, of ion 2 plus in the pristine sample. And then when we uh, take the lithium off from the sample, from the structure, we started to see this singlet. That is confirming the oxidation of ion 2 plus to ion 3 plus. And then when we put back the lithium into the structure, we started to see again the doublet that is confirming the reduction of ion 3 plus to ion 2 plus. And then we, look, we are looking when we are looking at the E0 value of normalization, normalized data. So this is, so we looked at, we looked at the E0 value of ion KH. And then we saw a shift. So it's definitely, it's def, it's definitely shifted to higher energy. So that is a confirmation of in situ excess data of lithium ion 2 plus to lithium ion 3 plus. But then the E0 value did not go further than ion 3 plus reference. So we believe that we are not seeing any ion 4 plus formation. And that was also happening same into ion, lithium rich ion silicate materials. Okay. And this table is showing the valence of iron uh, that we have got from the XSense data and the calculated lithium number of lithium in the structure, in the materials. And then as you can see, they have got like a reversible, so they are reversible behavior, they've got reversible behavior. So as you, uh, in, as you decrease the number of lithium from the cathode, you get the oxidation number higher to three plus, and then it goes back to um, two plus when you put back the lithium into the method, to the structure. So um, then we also looked at um, structural parameters for ion sites in lithium ion silicate by the white roller factor. And this is actually from, um, from other literature. And as you can see, so when you are taking, when you are oxidizing the iron, the radius of iron is decreasing, so that can interact the oxygen towards the iron more. So then that is, so then that is shortening the iron and oxygen bond. And then that also goes back when you are 
pelin vahto lithium. But then if you look at the if you look at the iron and silicon bond distance, they are not changing at all. They are really constant. So that is showing that the very stable silica tetrahedral stru structure, and therefore it's proven that it's ideal for the safety battery materials. Okay. Then we have done the calculation as well by ourselves, so calculating the bond distance of iron and oxygen and iron and silicon, and we have got a pretty much the same data as what we saw before. And also, not only in lithium ion silicate, but also in lithium rich ion silicate, we so they are pretty much exactly the same structure as even when they are cycled and even in the, in their in pristine sample. Okay, to summarize uh, my talk, so that we did not see, you know, our first aim was basically to see the, we wanted to see the transition formation, you know, phase transition of lithium ion silicate. And yes, we did, we did successfully do that because we saw the lithium ion silicate ion of oxidation of ion from two plus to three plus. And then also comparing the bond distance data we can now understand better what is actually going on in the phase transition. And then, however, uh, our second aim to see ion 4 plus, we did not see any ion 4 plus in the lithium ion silicate battery materials because we could only see the electro electrolyte degradation. But then, as I said before, lithium ion silicate is very um, stable battery, very safe, it's considered to be very safe, ba safe battery material. And it's also got a good cyclability because oxidation state is, and the bond distance are reproducible. And last but not the least, I would like to thank to the Arista group and EPSRC and WO and ESRF in Grenoble. That's where we have done our excess analysis. And thank you very much for the chairman. <laughs> And thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, are there questions? Please. Um, let me. Uh, if not, uh, let me just ask, uh, you compared um, the composition lithium-2 with uh, lithium-2.2 and found uh, not much difference. Oh, yes. Uh, if you go to lithium-deficient uh, composition, um, uh, let's say 1.9 or so. I, I think that would actually increase the potential of the battery, so we didn't go for that. Because uh -huh. what we wanted to see, what we... What, our idea was, okay, what, what if we had got more lithium going in and taken out from the battery, so then that could, we thought that we could increase the voltage of the battery, siphon the battery. But then if you go lithium deficient, that less ion, uh, less lithium ion is going in and taken out from the, battery, from the structure. So that is, that is going to be decreasing the capacity of the battery, so we didn't want to go for that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't see further questions, so let's thank you again. Thank you.